Good day everyone. Our next topic is trigonometric differentiation. Now for your syllabus, you're only required to know those of the trigonometric functions sine x and cos x, sine and cos. So let's look at the table and see what's happening. If you have a function, if you're given the function y equals sine x, then the derivative of that is cos x. If you're given the function y equals cos x, then its derivative is a negative sine x. Now let's look at this one. Here we have sine ax. Now a is the coefficient of x, the number in front of the x. So if you're given the function in that form, y equals sine ax, its derivative is a cos ax. Notice it's still cos x, still cos, but because of how the function is arranged, we have sine ax, the derivative is a cos ax. I want to skip down to this last one, not this last, but to this one here where we have sine ax plus b. Notice three different forms. We have sine x, sine ax, and sine ax plus b. The same way, the derivative of sine ax was a cos ax. The derivative of sine ax plus b is a cos ax plus b. Now, same as before, a is the coefficient of x and b is the constant. For cos x, it's negative sine x as we said before. For cos ax, it's negative a sine ax. And for cos ax plus b, it's negative a sine ax plus b. Now, what does all of this mean? Let's look at two examples. Follow along. So we have our first example. Y equals sine 2x minus cos x. So you're just going to follow the pattern to get your derivative. Now sine 2x is in this form. The question is taking this form for sine 2x. We have sine ax, a here is 2. So therefore, when we differentiate our sine 2x, the answer will be, let's go again, when we differentiate our sine 2x, the answer will be 2 cos 2x, as you see right there. Place the negative sign, and now we're at cos x which has an answer, negative sine x, and that goes down. So, for sine 2x, the answer was 2 cos 2x, negative sine goes down, and for cos x, the derivative is negative sine x. So these two negative signs together make um, becoming positive, and this is our final answer. Let's look at the next one y equals 3 cos 3x minus sine 5x. So here we have a 3 coefficient in front of cos x, in front of cos 3x. If we go to the cos 3x, it's patterning this, this one. For cos 3x, the answer will be negative 3 sine 3x, as you see we have here in bracket. So that answer will simply be multiplied by this coefficient outside the 3, so it's 3 times that answer. The negative sign goes back, now we're at sine 5x. 
which is in this form. So for sine 5x, we'll get 5 cos 5x, as you see here. So when we simplify, remember these have to be multiplied. Now this 3 is only going to be multiplied by this negative 3, which will give us negative 9. The sine 3x is a function by itself. You do not multiply the 3 by this 3x here, okay? So it's three times this function. This is one single function. So imagine it, we're saying three apples, okay? So it's now three times all of that, and then we get negative 9 of that function, if that makes sense, hopefully. And then nothing to do here, so it goes back, and this becomes our final answer. For our next example, we have y equal sine 5x plus 8 minus cos 3x minus 4. So for this first part, sine 5x plus 8, the function is in this form, ax plus b, ax plus b. So we get for sine 5x plus 8, a 5 cos 5x plus 8. 5 here, 5 here is the coefficient of x, which is the 8. So once again, sine 5x plus 8 makes our answer 5 cos 5x plus 8. As you see there, minus sign goes back. Now for this part, cos 3x minus 4, 3 here is our a, which will, and our function is in this form. So for cos 3x minus 4, the answer will be minus 3 sine 3x minus 4, as you see right here. And the two negative signs together become positive. For the next question, we have y equals 2 over 3 sine x over 4. Now I rewrote this part of the function as sine quarter x because x over 4 is the same as quarter x. So we can um, easily identify our a. Remember a is the number in front of the x. So, this 2 over 3, I'm going to put it on the outside and differentiate this part. This, like I said, is sine quarter x, and our quarter is our a. So, for sine quarter x, we'll get quarter cos quarter x, as you see right here. So the 2 over 3 that we have on the outside will be multiplied by that part. And you simply multiply these numbers to give us 1 over 6. And the cos quarter x goes back. For our final example, we have y equals 3 cos 2 over 2x over 5 minus sine 3 minus 8x. We first need to identify from this section what a is, what the coefficient is, and it's, it is of course 2 over 5. Now this is, in the, is now saying cos 2 over 5x, which is patterning this form. So for cos 2 over 5x, we're going to get negative 2 over 5 sine 2 over 5x, as you see here. And it gets multiplied by the 3 that was outside. Minus sign goes back. Now, for this side, we need to identify what our a is. Remember, a is the coefficient of x, the number in front. And that number is negative 8. So, our a is negative 8. So for sine ax plus b, which is from our question sine negative 8x plus 3, 
we get negative 8 cos, and you could put the 3x, sorry, the 3 minus 8x, just as you were given. I simply need you to understand that a is negative 8. So once again, for sine 3 minus 8x, it's um, in this form, the function is in this form. The a is negative 8. So the answer is negative 8 cos and the function that's in bracket goes back as you see here. The two negative signs together become a positive and now when we simplify or multiply these two we get negative 6 over 5 and this is our final answer. Everything goes back. That's multiplied to give us negative 6 over 5. The sine 2 over 5x goes plus sine and this part nothing is done. It goes back. Now, let us calculate a few questions. So, in our first question, we have y equals 3 cos 8x minus, that's right there, we're going to do them separately, this part and then that part. So, whatever we get when we differentiate cos 8x, we be, will be multiplied by 3. So, let's put our 3 on the outside and for cos 8x it's going to be following this so cos 8x will give us negative 8 sine 8x let's put it here on our bracket Now, this part, whatever we get when we differentiate sine of that function will be multiplied by our negative half. So let's put that on the outside. And now, we're at sine 4 minus 3x. That's in this form. So as you see, our a which is the number in front of the x, the coefficient, is negative 3. So our answer will be negative 3 cos, and the bracket goes back. I'm going to put square brackets to make the distinction. So this is the answer we get, which is going to be multiplied by our negative half. So when we simplify, 3 times negative 8 is negative 24, and you write back your sine 8x. Here, negative half times negative 3 is a positive 3 over 2, and you write back your cos 4 minus 3x and that is our final answer for this question whatever we get when we differentiate sine 2x will be multiplied by our negative 9 so for sine 2x which is following this pattern we get for sine 2x 2 cos 2x Whatever we get when we differentiate here will be multiplied by our negative 11. So, here we have sine 5 minus 7x. We have to have first identify our a in the function, which is negative 7, the coefficient of x, the number in front of the x. So, it's in this pattern. So, for sine 5 minus 7x, we get negative 7 cos, and you write back the bracket. So now when we simplify, negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. You write back your cos 2x. 
negative 11 times negative 7 is positive 77 and you write back your cos 5 minus 7x. For this question, whatever we get when we differentiate here will be multiplied by our negative 3 quarter. So what will we get? Now, we have cos x over 6 minus 2. The function is in this form. For a, which is the number in front of the x, like we um, discussed before, it's going to be 1 over 6. Because x over 6 is the same as 1 over 6 x. So a is 1 over 6, which makes our answer negative 1 over 6 sine, and you put backwards in bracket. Now, for the next part, whatever we get when we differentiate, cos 3x will be multiplied by 4. And with cos 3x, it's in this form, we'll simply get negative 3 sine 3x. So, now we can simplify. A negative 3 quarter gets multiplied with our negative 1 over 6. You know, cancel that. That's a 2. So that's a positive 1 over 8. And you write back your sine and your bracket function. Here, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And you write back your sine 3x. For this question, we're going to differentiate cos x and multiply, multiply our answer with our negative 3. When we differentiate cos x, we simply get negative sine x. We're going to differentiate this part and our answer will get multiplied by that 8 on the outside. Now, here we have sine 2 minus x over 4. That function is in this form, sine ax plus b. a is going to be the number in front of the x or its coefficient, which is negative 1 over 4. So negative 1 over 4, negative 1 over 4, cos, and the bracket goes back. My bad. Sorry. Two minus x over four. And finally, this part I just I just um dropped it in. Three x squared will simply give us six x. So now when we simplify, negative three times a negative sine x will give us a positive three sine x. 8 times a negative quarter will give us a negative 2. And we put back our cos and bracket. And the 6x goes back.